water to those global colors, sometimes adding extender to those global colors, sometimes just varying the technique at which I'm using to make that particular color. Let me show you something, let me show you something like that. So here I have my acrylic colors out here, okay? Now, I'm going to put out, let's just say, let's, for example, let's paint a, let's paint a, uh, we uh, painted a, a little yellow um, uh, blossoms and stuff the other day. Let me just do a little light yellow rose here. Dry, pure dry, pure acrylic. Show you something here. We'll just mix this up here a little bit. I'm going to make a lighter yellow here for a second. Just dilute yellow and white. This is just two, and this is my water. Don't get too confused. I'm going to thin this out a bit for a second because I like to start out slightly transparent here. I'm just going to paint a little yellow rose here for you. So I'm going to put out my color. Now, I want this rose to be softer onto the edges here. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to blur that edge right out into my background. So I'm using the, the technique of transparency with it right here. Okay, so I'll move that out there like that. Alrighty, now let's just grab a little more yellow here and let's come in and let's set in the center. Now, we'll let that dry up just for a second. Now, there's a um, couple of things that you can do here when painting. I need a darker color here. So, now yeah, here's perfect. Here is a tube of quinacridone violet. Okay, this is a perfect little color. Let's put out some quinacridone violet. Okay. So now I'm 100% pure acrylic here. And I'll paint a rose that's going to look like it's oil, really. I'm going to take a little bit of my quinacridone, mix it up into a little bit of my darulite here. I'll make a darker color here. And I'm going to come in. We're going to do hundreds of little videos like this. But I'll put the center in of the rose. And I'm going to show you many times that the center of the rose is one of the things that really makes it look like a rose. I'll just run my finger over the back edge of that to soften it out so that I don't uh, create too much ridges or lines or something like that. That's part of a technique. Grab a little water here. Let's put a bowl onto this rose here. Let's come in, put a bowl shadow down this side. Let's just push that in here like this. I push it around while that color is wet. I push it around and I start to you start to get the softness to it. So. One of the things that I use a lot in, in acrylic techniques, paper towels, I use a lot of paper towels, uh, but I use a lot of um, pushing around and stuff with my fingers. It all depends. Stroke pieces and stuff I don't, but other pieces I do. You can make soft, really blended looking roses. Let's go in a little bit closer here so you can be thrilled and amazed. And... So you can make really soft, almost blended looking roses with just transparent color. That's what the Dutch do. They will put on grisaille and then layers upon layers upon layers of very thin color on top of that. We're going to paint a lot of that, but they do. So all I have to do is remember I thin it out a little bit and work it here. Now let's put on a highlight. So I'm going to come over here. Let's put on the front of the rose here and get a little highlight. So I'm going to take a little more white here. Now, do I want this to really advance? I might uh, really come at you. I might pick up more paint so I get some texture to it. And I'm going to put the front of the rose on here like this. Okay, now one of the things I'm going to do, it's dry down here already. See, it's dry already. Is I'm just going to lift off like this and so I don't have that ridge down there. And I'm going to soften it out and that's going to make it look like it's already a blended rose. Already. Let's just lighten up our center a little bit here. And if the paint starts to dry, like right here on the edge down here, it starts to dry. As a matter of fact, you can see it start to push up a little bit because it's dry. All you have to do is just add a little bit of water to it and the paint reconstitutes on your palette all the time. The paint will do that. The paint will do that for several hours, actually, depending on the humidity, okay? The humidity in, that's in your air the 
is going to cause the paint to dry faster or slower. So one says, okay, what's the drying time in your paint? Well, it depends on where you live. And a lot of people think, okay, and they write me all the time, I live in a real hot area. Well, that means nothing to me. You can live down in Houston, Texas, and the humidity outside, which I've been there many, many, many times, the humidity outside could be almost 90 degrees, and it could be 90 degrees uh, 90 uh, percent humidity and can be 90 degrees out and you um, you know your your paint's not going to dry not going to dry that fast but you know you go into some other place where the air is real dry like well, our, our place our, our gallery out in Nebraska a lot of times humidity can get down to 14 percent and stuff and the paints dry real fast what's really nice about that is you can globalize a color there in about eight hours it works really nice so let's take some of this and this is drying up out here let's take some of this and let's just add a little bit more of my uh, quinacridone violet down in here as a deeper shadow I'll work this out here, out like this. Now I get little lines like that. I just push it out like that so I can I can stop some of the color there, okay? And if I want it softer, I put a lighter color into it here, and I'll push back, and I'll, I'm always watching, whenever I'm painting, I'm always watching my color in relationship to its background. So all I have to do is take a color here like its background here and I'll and it'll get it'll get better let's come in here and just put a little bit of yellow right up through here make a back like a back petal or something like that just work the color a little bit transparently and use your finger and just model it around push it around like that and you get this real wet kind of looking color here now let's come out and make some reaching petals here take a little bit of water into this color because it's starting to dry right here a bit so I'm gonna make a little more yellow too. bring a little more yellow into the flower a little bit of my water I'm just touching into a little bit of my water here just to get this a little bit of water into this so I can stroke this pretty easy let's put some petals out here like this for the rose bring these back down in come down here like this the bottom side here I want to fade away a little bit like that Let's just push the color right here as it's coming into the bowl. So I know it comes into the bowl there pretty nice. Maybe put a little more yellow right down here at the edge of the bowl. Now you come right into this area here. This is where this white is almost dry. And this area that's in here. If I want to get something really soft, this is where I use... There's, there's no less than maybe 30 different techniques that I use to make something soft in there. And I'm going to show you. The big thing is you've got to reduce what we call the optical difference between the two colors. Now, the optical difference can be textures, it can be value, it can be intensity, it can be tone, it can be a number of things. But what I want to do is put these two colors closer together. Now, what a lot of Zostava, what do Zostava painters? Have you ever painted the Zostava technique and watched the Zostava Masters? I did that, did that for years. I did that back in the 1980s. I used it on my master floral with the uh, SDP. As a matter of fact, I was invited over to Russia as, a, as an exchange during Glasnost time, during that time to learn more about their techniques and everything. But what do they do? They put on thin washes of color. They'll paint out a light tray off against the back to pop the color out. It's basically a Chippendale technique. Then they do layers and layers of washes of color. And you really don't have to paint in oils to paint Zostava because they paint everything just so so quickly and in layers. But everyone always thinks, oh, you got to use oils, 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 oils. No, you don't. So if I was going to go to like a zost of a softening technique, I would come in here. I have a color here, which is white. I have a color here, which is dilute. All I'm going to do is come up here with a color that's right between the two, right between this. Let me pull this down just a little bit more here. So color, here's my white, here's my dilute, here's my color right between the two. I mix it up with a little water so it's a little thinner. And I put a glaze of that right there like that on top of that. Push the edge just a bit. And all of a sudden I have a nice, I'm blending it out. If I go right here, I can put a little bit more yellow. Go right there if I want that softer to disappear. And I can make a softer shadow there. Now, real fast, it looks like I've just blended that entire area right there. And I haven't. I've painted the entire thing with an acrylic. 
Okay, now here's one that's painted global. Here's one that's painted acrylic. You're watching me paint it acrylic. And there's really not too much of a difference between the two looks. Does that make sense? What there is, is a heck of a lot of practice. And also, the one advantage I have right now over, you, over all of you is that I created these paints. I know these paints. It's the only thing I use is these paints. So... I, you know, I painted for a long time in oils and I painted in watercolor and did all these other things. I know those feelings. But now this is the only thing I paint. I'm not afraid to use it. I know water or extender or anything. I can do anything with these paints at any time because I understand completely these paints. If you're, if you're an artist that constantly changes your media, you never completely learn how to drive. It's like, consider it this way, driving your car. You know how to drive your car. You go rent a car, you go get in a rental car. It feels strange. It feels strange to drive that rental car until you drive it for about a week. Then it doesn't feel so bad because you start to get used to it. Well, every time you change your media, you're doing the same thing. You know, I have some students that go out there and say, oh, I've done a lot of color pencil, you know, this week. And I'm just like, oh. And then they write to me, well, I can't catch the feeling of this. I can't paint your flowers. Of course you can't. You're changing your car so many times that you're not really catching the feeling of it. So you really got to, you really, if this is what you want to do, you really got to head into it and do it. Now, this is dry. This is completely dry. So let's paint out a, let's, let's put in a petal here. Let's put in a bigger petal and cause it to soften out, but go back here. So, I want to put in a lighter pedal. I'm going to come up here by my, really by my light. Matter of fact, I'll make the pedal a little bit too light. I'm going to take some white and some Darulide yellow and right here, a little bit too light. Let's stroke on a pedal here, okay? Let's stroke on a pedal right where I want it there and let's come back around. I want this to recede back, but it's not really receding back. It's flattening out because I do what like a lot of, uh, of a lot of painters do is, or, you know, we put on too much white. Remember I said that in an earlier video, too much white causes it to flatten out. So immediately what I do is just push my finger like this to soften it and push up the color that's underneath. That's the beautiful part about heritage is it doesn't pull a hole. See how that doesn't pull a hole? I'm just pushing it right there like that and, and causing that look. Now, a lot of people say, oh, Dave, you have magic fingers. No, I know the paint. I know how hard to push. And I know, you know, what, and I know I won't get a hole. I won't get a hole because I know how hard to push on that. How many, you know, how do you know how hard to push on it? You paint a rose, then you paint a rose, then you paint a rose. And one of the things I did was I painted so many different flowers. I tried to create problems with flowers and tried to make the heritage not work. And so I know it's limitations. There are a few things you can do to make it not work, but you know, you probably will never encounter those. It'll work. Don't worry about it. It'll work. Now, see, that's already dry back here. I can't move it anymore. So I can come in here because the air is so dry in here right now. I can come in here, add another petal right up on top of that, just to say a smaller one right in there like that, and push that right like that and create another soft little look. And look at that flower. That flower there looks like it's been blended with oils. And you're watching me paint this with paints that I've just squirted right out of the tube. And I'm doing it while the surface is dry. Right now, right now, there's so much fear that you cannot paint if the flower dries. Yeah, you can. You still can. I just changed my techniques a little bit. And along the way in this class, there will be frustration. I'm not going to lie to you about that. There's going to be frustration. There's going to be frustration uh, as you have to learn. Well, it's like... One of my best flower painting students, uh, stu uh, uh, students that I have. She's been painting with me since 2002. She's an incredible flower painter. And uh, she wrote me the other day and she was just so discouraged, so frustrated at this optical technique that I had shown in some DVDs. 
and getting her to do that. She can she can match me stroke for stroke and doing a French floral, doing all this other kind of stuff. But the optical stuff, she was getting so frustration. And she was just like, teacher, what do I do? And it was just so great because I finally found something that she's having a hard time with. But I wrote to her and I said, I'm frustrated all the time. Frustration is a constant thing for me. Frustration means you are doing something new. You are learning something new. And so if you're not getting frustrated at any time, you're not learning or you're not you're not pushing past your boundaries as an artist. Okay? And so frustration is good. Let it happen. It's going to be it's going to be good. And we'll do live classes, we'll do other classes. I'll get you through that frustration. We're going to get through that. Don't get frust frustration is good. Okay? Everyone remember that. Frustration is good. All right. So here you see this is dry down here. Okay, I'm going to let this one dry up a little bit more. Let's look at this for a second. Where the paint is really thin, right in here, it's already dry. Where the paint was just a little thicker on that edge, you can just see a little bit of a shine to it. That's still a little bit wet there. So, and I'll show you, I'm waiting for it to dry just a bit. Now I'm going to pick up, uh, let's step back so you can see my palette just a bit more. Pick up a little water here. We'll push it right into here. Not too much because I'm in the front of the flower. I'll put some light here. Let's put in a light petal here, right up here to the front. Now, what do I want to do here? I'll just show you. I'm going to overpaint this with too much white right down through here like that. Just exactly what they do in Zostava and stuff. I'll just pull out like that and push in just a bit, just to lose that edge. And see how the heritage, you know how long it took us as acrylic paint makers to be able to get that paint to move that uniform and that easy. It's called the shear of the paint. The paint's ability to grab onto a surface and move back and forth. This is one reason why I paint on a matte surface. This board is just a matte surface, okay? And I showed this to you in other videos. This board is a matte surface and it is grabbing onto the hair. It is equally here. And see, it's already starting to dry. But if I do that real quick, push that in and out, I get this nice transparency right up to my light that's right up there. Now, what happens if I find an area here? There's different techniques. And in the, in the class, I'm going to show you so many techniques, so many different ways that you can paint flowers like this at any time Anyways, whether it's dry or wet or anything, you'll just adjust the techniques. My job is to give you this entire bank of techniques and then start showing you how to, uh, well, giving you the freedom to change, to use some of those techniques, depending on what's happening to you at your house. So this starts to look like a globally painted wet rose, and I'm painting it completely acrylic here. Keeping my palette here wet. Now, see, this is almost dry over here. This is dry, almost dry up right up over here. And uh, this pretty dry here. I can take some water, reconstitute that. Pick up all that paint again. See how quick that is? I can pick it all up, move it right off of the everything. You see no grungies in it or anything like that. It's all wet, okay? It's all completely wet and all completely usable again, okay? And so... I understand that about the paint. I'm going to get you there too. All right. So let's take, wow, this is a great color. Let's take some of this color. Let's just wash a little bit of this color now. Just thin wash right over the bottom of it. Basically what they do a lot of times in Zostava flowers. That causes that whole flower to recede down there to that edge. Let's wash a little bit here to the back side back here and give a little bit of a wispy edge to that. That's great. Let's take a little bit of dark Put it on the corner of the brush. Let's increase our dark right into our flower right in here. Now, what happens if I try to do this? Well, I can thin it out a little bit. But what happens if I want to have more interest? Well, let's just take a little yellow and a little pink and let's just whisper around a little bit more into that flower and get some more movement going on in there. Let's take a little bit of that. Let's come right in here and let's increase our shadow right in here on this side of the bowl. Now, how do you soften that right there? I can stick my finger in it, or I can go to another technique, which I've done hundreds of videos on, and, you know, 
people watch it and go great, but they, you know, maybe they don't completely understand it. What I have to do is take a color right in between this one and this one. So here's my color right here. Here's my other color right here. I'll just take some of that, add that to this color that's right here. Come in right between the two, go right down with a stroke right between them, maybe hit it with my finger, and all of a sudden I create an, it's an optical effect. I've softened that out. Now I'll put a little bit of pink here, right here. Let's just go up this side with that soft pink. That's kind of pretty on the bottom of that bowl. Let's put some of that in there, all right? Now, how do I make, let's say I want to make this pop off a little bit more. Well, first, I'm using just water I'm touching into right here. It's just water. Just taking some of that out of my brush for a second. This is pretty much dried up out of here. Let's say I want to recede this petal back down to this one right here. All I have to do is go to a pure acrylic technique of a wash. Here. Of a wash. Okay. And just wash it over it. Boom. There it goes. Now that petal's softer. Let's just push this whole air, air unit back here with a glazing technique that's softer. I can make it even more, boom, a little brighter, a little softer, whatever I want to do, there it is. I can push a little bit of a wash here onto this pedal and push that pedal back if I wanted to too, because this is all dry. That's another technique, glazing, washing. Can you add glazing medium? Absolutely. Will it give it more depth? Yes. Can you do it with just water? Yes. Can I put on a coat of extender and do it? Yes. It'll dry slower, won't dry as fast as it is right now. Maybe if I'm gonna dry it slower or while you have time, maybe you take a little more white. Maybe you go to a exhaustive a technique, which we'll paint some. We'll just pull in a little bit, just like that. Then now we've got a nice little shadow there. We'll just lift out just a touch too. Now we leave some of that shadow and some of that light. That's a fun little flower there. I don't like to do that too much because it makes the flower start to look really blended. Let's just put a little light there. Just pull down like that. That's kind of pretty right there. Let's put a, let's go a little bit lighter back up here into our front one. I want a little bit of streak. I love the streaks in the flowers. I painted my years of really, um, really soft ones and now I like a little more streak. Let's build a little bit more right up into the front of the flower here. Let's put another little bowl stroke right here. Let's put some white right into here. Now, got a lot of white there. Let's push it in. Now, I can push it in with my finger here really easy, just like I showed you on the other things there, because the acrylic, the heritage pushes really easy. Or I can take some water, some of my quinacridone violet here, a little bit of my yellow, create a little shadow, create a half tone if I wanted to, right in between the two there and just run that right there and soften it. Maybe go a little bit more of the, of the dark. Now in older generations acrylics, you would be pulling holes and doing all that kind of nasty stuff right now, but you're not with the heritage because the heritage is designed to do all of this stuff. Okay. And I'll come back in here and maybe put a little edge there. Let's build a little more white here. Let's build in just a little bit more light. Let's put in a little more light color. Let's put in, let's build a, a I like flowers to be a little streaky, so I'm going to leave a little more streak here like that. I like those types of looks and streaks. That's kind of pretty. Um, if I want to get more light, maybe I want to have a little bit more of a highlight right here out on the tip of this one. Just pull in. I'm controlling that. I'm going to show you all different kinds of ways. This flower here looks very much painted and blended and everything like that. And I'm painting 100% acrylic. I can do little edges to the petals like this. Make these little fuzzy little edges, lost edges, transparent edges, all different kinds of stuff. I can come back here a little bit of light turn on a few little petals back here to the back here like that make it a pretty little back edge of that rose here maybe come around like that all of this back here well there's a nice little wet white spot there and uh, let's just take that off take a little water scrub that right off there add a little movement back there hide that all that's good let's make a little some more textured white 
right up into the very front. That'll lift that flower, that front of that flower up a little bit more. I like that. And uh, now I'll use a lifting technique here this time. I'm going to put a little water in my brush. This is another technique. I'm going to show you all of these. I'm going to take a little water. My, this is one of my favorite techniques to paint into the front of a rose. And I'll lift off. This time, this is lifting pure acrylic and water. Here, leaving and, and showing the, the, the bowl petal there. And I'm just going to pull this one here. And that one doesn't work too well, so I'm going to push it down here. And I'll take some more water in my brush and push it right into the position that it needs to be right there like that. That works pretty well. That's kind of a pretty little petal. Let's push a, a little bit of a light petal right up here like this. Let's just take, while that's there, I'll just wipe my brush. Now I can even let that dry a little bit. Let's just take my brush with a little bit of water in it. This is one of the things that the fusion brushes are designed to do. There you go. Now, how do you make them? Those of us who the, one of the first lesson videos I put into the classroom was the painting of the blossoms, right? And in the painting of the blossoms, I showed you, you know, how do you go about without, how do you go about making this flower pop off without adding more white? Generally, people just go add white, 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 white. And I told you that's not the way you do it. You go back in and you work on your background. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my greens and stuff. If you haven't watched that video yet, go in there and watch that video and stuff. It, it, is, it was supposed to be a 30-minute lesson that turned into an hour and a half because I showed you some design and some color and stuff like that, which is what I want to do. But got a little bit of spray there going. But we go in and you can use negative painting techniques like this to pull in and pull and pop off the edges of your flowers like that. So I can lift the edge of this flower off here. I can I can negative paint the edge of the flower here and make it really lift off. This is all acrylic still. Well, actually the green here, I picked it up off of my global palette so it's a little wet, but it doesn't have to be. And I can come in here and shape the flower a bit with, and this is where I do a lot of painting afterwards, acrylic or global or whatever, whatever I want to do. I do a lot of the back. That's why I paint the background a lot of times last because I go in and I shape my flowers many times with my background, with what I'm doing in my background. So here I'll just pull some of this color down. Let's take a little bit of that quinacridone, pretty good little color. And streak some of that down through there too. I love movement like that because that just increases the price of the painting. It's really a pretty um, contemporary look that a lot of artists are doing now. And it is really pretty. Pretty little look. But you can put colors back in there like that and start really painting your flower. I can come back in here, add more. Let's say that, okay, I like that, but you know, maybe I, maybe I, um, I want to pop the edge of this petal here. I like the edge of that petal, but I want to pop it off some more. You know, you can at any time. You know, I'll just pick up some of my yellow that's there. I'll look, I'll watch my yellow. I watch values. I watch, we're going to do a lot. I'm just going to pop up the edge of that petal there. Maybe pop up the edge of this petal here. Now, how do you soften it? Well, you know, do you try to sneak some stuff in there? A lot of times I use my finger and I just run it right against the edge there. But if you, um, you know, all you need, there's a lot of things. All you need is a little bit of water or just a little bit of water because the heritage won't pull a hole. This is a different type of acrylic. It won't pull a hole. So you can just take a little water and the yellow right there like that just to soften that edge. Now you have a highlight out there on it, and I can use this down here. I can, I could take an edge like this. This is an edging technique I show. I can take an edge like this and just pop around like that and make it look like a transparent edge of a rose back down here like that. Transparent petal edges and stuff. We're gonna do some of those. We're gonna do a lot of stuff. Where I'm gonna show you both acrylic and global techniques and everything. So. Now I have this rose that I've sitting here and painted on it for 30 minutes and and uh, doing it completely acrylic, completely acrylic, but yet it looks like a soft little uh, painted rose here. 
And of course, you know, like I say, you can add more and more and more and more, and you can add more strokes and more structures to them and stuff. I can, I can lift off now with a little bit of yellow to push some of that back in there. I kind of like that sometimes. There's a bunch of different techniques. So one of the things that I do when I'm painting, I can, I look at my paint where I'm at. And if my paint, if my area on my rows dries, I don't worry about it because I, sh I shift over to an acrylic technique to fix it. I either do a wash on it or I put another color on it and I just use my finger. Let's say that, you know, if you, you know, you had a yellow petal or something like that and you want to soften it out. Now, see this white that's right here is still a little, it's been another 30 minutes. This white is still just a little bit wet. I can move it around a little bit. The other ones are completely dry. This out here is completely dry, but where the white was thicker, I can move it. Thicker paint dries slower. Um, let's take a, a little bit of yellow right here like this. Let's push this out, okay? And We'll let that dry there for, for just a second. I'll show you something. But uh, as a matter of fact, while you're doing that, I'll just add a couple more little things while that's drying up there. Let's just add a couple more fun little things here. Maybe, uh, you know, this is... I'm going to show you all different kinds of techniques for, for painting leaves and everything here. But, uh, you know, we can start adding a few other little things here. Now, so I'm painting this, this, I have green, I have quinacridone, I have yellow, and I have white. We're making this nice little painting here. Just a fun little painting here. It's a great little painting. I love quinacridone and, and uh, pine green. It gives this lovely brown colors. I love that kind of stuff. You know, they're, they're really kind of nice, really kind of pretty. So we'll let that dry up there just a bit. It's starting to already because I'm in the winter air and it's very dry. I look out to, you know, a lot of people go there and they look at the the um, the forecast, weather forecast and stuff, and they always go, oh, it's going to be hot today. It's going to rain today. It's going to rain anything. I look at the relative humidity. You know, I'm looking at that a lot. Every time I go to a different area, I look at the relative humidity. So this is starting to dry out here like this, okay, because it's, it's, uh, it's already pretty dry. Let's say I wanted to push a light stroke, okay? So let's say I want to put a light stroke, and I go boom right here like this. And maybe, in fact, let me, let me push one right over here, too. Boom. Now, how do I go about softening those strokes? Say I want to soften that edge. While it's wet, you could use your finger just like this and push the heritage because that's what it's designed to do. And it pushes. And it looks like you've just blended it. Okay? The other way is to do what I call a half tone. Well, there's quite a few other ways I'm going to show you. A half tone is halfway between the two. So I go halfway between the yellow, halfway between the white, and I come right down between the two. That's a little bit light. So I come right down between the two with that half tone. And I slowly head that half tone towards that yellow background there. And you can push a little bit. It's on there. But I like, this is the look I like to paint because sometimes this gets a little too smooth for me. I like streaks and movements and stuff like that within a petal. That's where you get a lot of interest. That's the kind of thing that I'm looking for, where I just go like that, and I get that streak and that interest. Now, look at that petal, okay? That petal that is sitting there looks just like that one right there. So I could paint this rose global, or I can paint this rose acrylic. Now, this rose here, which I showed some of you in, the, in one of the lessons, this rose here is painted global. And you can see where I've lifted off color. That's a lift off technique. This is painted global, but it looks very close to a rose that's painted acrylic. The two will be very, very close to each other. Matter of fact, I could make this one look like that one. So what's the difference? It's just you as the artist, how you're going to approach that with a bunch of different techniques, okay? So do you have to always paint global? Heck no. Sometimes I paint very fast acrylic. Do, can you make the same types of looks? Yes, you can, as you understand it. And will there be frustration? Of course there will be. I hope there is. 
Because if there is, my job is to get rid of that frustration in you. But if there is, that means you're learning. And that's what we're, the whole goal of this whole program is. What we're doing for the next eight months, that's what we're doing, is to show you how to use. And you're going to show, you know, sometimes, hopefully by the end of the program, it's like when I paint with some of my friends here in the studio all the time, we don't like using the global because it stays wet too long and we want to move on and try and do some other things with it. So I'm going to show you both. And then you're going to control it. I'm going to turn you into a pure artist. And that artist is going to be able to control their paint, control the look, and control their brush. Okay? We're having a lot of fun with it. Alrighty? Global or acrylic doesn't really make too much a difference. That's all up to you. You can squirt out a little bit of paint each time. I'm going to show you both. So in the lessons that are in the classroom, if I'm painting global, try the global so you can learn it. If I'm painting acrylic, try the acrylic so you can learn it. Other lessons which are pure design lessons that we're doing, pure compositional type lessons, um, optical type lessons, you can choose what you're going to paint with. Okay? Alrighty. I'll see you on the other lessons. And let's get going. <laughs>